Hello everyone, welcome again in this tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to share with you the following issue. For example, now in this setup, I have eight LEDs connected to eight GBIO with a one button also connect to one input uh, pin. This button, whenever it's be pressed, it will be increase a counter inside the MCU, and this counter will be triggering. Uh, I mean, according to the number of the counter, will be activated the LEDs. For example, now only one, now two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then go back again to one. Okay. So the issue is like this. For example, now we increase the counter up to two. Now we have two values, counter number two. Now when I reset it will go back again to the initial set which is one increase again maybe to four now i have one two three four leds on when i reset the the arduino the mcu it will be go again to one why we face this issue this problem because all our code and all the variable we have set it just uh, we initial we initiated or initialize it inside the the ram of the mcu <clears throat> now i want to uh, permanently burn or permanently save actually not burn to save the data or save my counter inside the EEP room of the MCU so next time when I reset the MCU again it will remember my last counter value okay for example now I set to 5 this number 5 5 LEDs on when I reset it should be save this five or remember the five after I been resetting to do this I will use another button okay I will connect another tactile button to another GBIO this one will be still the, will be maintained the same I will maintain this the same to increase the counter but I will add this one later to another GB uh, to another uh, GBIO pin that whenever I press this it will save this counter to the EEP room okay because we cannot continuously saving whenever I change the value it will be saved directly inside the EEP room because there's a number of limited uh, cycles to save and erase from the EEP room so it's not uh, advisable to continuously save whenever there's a change or always save 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 just like you put in a while loop Therefore, I will use another button. So, for example, now I set to three, number three, three LEDs on. When I press this button, it should be save this number, which is three, inside the EEP room. Then later, when I reset, it will be called this location again and display number three again. Okay, so stay tuned for this. Let's change to the computer to see how we do the coding. And later I will show you the hardware with the code and the function. Thank you very much, stay tuned. Okay, so here we have reached to the software part in this tutorial. First of all, and the most important thing is we have to include this library, eeproom.h. This library is already uh, installed, pre-installed inside the IDE. No need to download it. Okay, you just need to call it. Uh, this one is will be help us to read and write a data into the EEP room of the MCU Okay, and here is the array where I store the number of the pin out that I already connect my LED to Whereby every number connect the number of uh, representing the number of the pin that the LED is connecting to Okay, and here I using Pin number 15, 16 as input for my buttons. Two buttons, as we said before, we use two buttons. Okay. Uh, 15 mean A1, 16 A2, and 14 here is A0. You can mention whether A1, A2, A0, A or you just use 14, 15, and 16. <clears throat> okay, so we need flag also into our code. And here is the second important thing in our code, okay? This is the counter that I will use to be displayed on the LED. And this counter will be stored inside EEP ROM location 0. Okay, this is the location of the EEP ROM. 
the first location which is location number zero okay i will read from the location number zero okay so we come to the setup here i'm looping through the the led array that we define here okay we have eight led i'm looping into them each of them and i'm looping into each one of them and set them as output and assign zero to them as initial state, okay? And then I'm defining the two uh, buttons as input with pull-up resistor, okay? In one and two, that's representing here, in number 15, 16, A1, A2, and also give some delay to uh, give time to initialize the, the button, the GBIOs. Okay, now, we come to the loop. In my loop, we can see just a few code, about 44 lines. In my loop, the first thing I will check is if the first button is pressed. If the first button is pressed, this one means the first button is pressed because already pull up, since it's already pull up, so, so when the button is pressed, it will be inverted or it will be zero. If this one is zero and flag is equal to one, flag is true, flag here we, we, we already define as one. So if this condition is true, first of all, I will set the flag to zero. So it will not come here again. If you press and hold, it will not like continuously executing this code and increasing the I or the counter more than one. So whenever you press the tactile button, it will be increased only by one, no more than one. Why? Because of this flag, we flag it. Once we enter this 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 uh, condition, because it's one, here it will be zero. When it will be zero, it means the condition will be broke. Once the condition broke, will not be executed again. Will not be executed more than one time. So it means it will be increased by the I will be increased by one only. Okay. So this line is a set of instructions actually. It will be used to increase our counter by one only. Okay, next. Here in this subsequent code, it will be used to save the data, the counter data, the counter value, which is I inside the EEP ROM. How first I'll check if we press the second, if we see here, this is the second button, okay? And at the same time, the flag is equal to 1, which is true. Then we go inside the code. First of all, I will set the flag to 0. So again, it will not be executed more than once. It will be executed only for once. And then I will write my counter, which is I. I will write it into the location zero that I already use it here. You see here, I use location number zero. Okay, so I will write this one inside my location. Okay, then I will just make some uh, motion here or some dynamic motion on the LED shows that uh, <clears throat> shows that uh, the save progress already done successfully by just flashing the eight LEDs for about four times. See here, I have loop for about four, four to four times. Then through this loop, I will turn on, you see this LED, turn on, then I will turn them off for about four, four times, yeah, four to five times, you'll see that later. This one just to, to give you some motion or some uh, feeling that, okay, the save process is successfully done. Okay, so I have finished with button number one, button number two code. Now we come to this third section. This third section actually is to reset or reinitialize our flag. Remember here just now we say we use the flag to enter the condition here and here to enter the condition. But after we enter the condition, we will set it to zero. So we broke the condition, so the code will not be executed more than one. However, when you release the button, when you release the button, okay, if you release, you see this one, if you release the first and the second, 
okay it means this all release you see all release there's no not but if you press it means there should be a not because it's pull up already if you release the first and release the second and the flag is zero okay if you release these two and the flag is zero i will set back the flag into one okay so when you release set back again flag to one so when you come to press again the flag already one so it can execute the code again and again but only once no more than once okay next for this one for this next section this section actually it will only track your counter value and reset it upon reach more than seven okay because we have as we saw just now we have only eight leds which is start from seven, zero to seven so more than seven it will not display meaningful data or number on the leds so it should be within seven okay so here it will be track the counter if the counter when you count when you increase it here we have incremental code here to increment the counter whenever button one is pressed this one will be tracked if it's reached more than seven it will reset back to zero okay then it will again give you some just like motion dynamic thing that you already reset this is actually not really important it's up to you okay so again i will loop from seven to one because here why i try why why i reverse from seven to one actually not from one or zero to seven because here when it reached to more than service mean already the eight leds already full on so i will just like continuously and sequentially turn them off one by one from the last to the first one so start from the last to the first one turn them off with some delay okay then after all this we just update our counter into the led we see which count which led according to the counter we are in now to set into one okay so to, to display which number uh which which is the value of our counter now okay so for example if the counter is equal three so led of three it will display the third led on the it will be uh, illuminate the third led in the breadboard okay so this is the code so let's compile and upload and see how it's working okay so now it's compiling uploading and then uploading okay so let's change the camera go to the uh, second camera and let's see how it works okay so welcome again okay so as we can see i have include the second uh, button and also wired up to the uh, required gbio which is uh, adc2 so now again the first button it will be function as the same is to increase the counter by one Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and go back to one. Okay, let's say now we want to save on two. So now we have only two LED light up. When we press the second button, there we go. When we see the all the LEDs flash, it mean it's already save number two inside the MCU EEP room. So now when we reset, we see come again to led number two reset again how many times you want to reset will come to you to the two and when we continue continue on top of two okay let's say now we want to go for number four one two three four we save here we go four the fourth led is light up then when we reset maintain reset again we'll maintain even though you increase your counter let's say now we go to number six okay when we are on number six but we didn't save yet when we reset it will go again back to number four because the last one we have saved is number four okay 
So we go again. I say now we go to number one. We save. Confirming. Then we reset. We come again to one. One of how many times you want to reset, how many times you want to power in, power up, or even you take off the battery, the main power supply, it will always remember the setting that you have been stored in the EEP ROM. Because the EEP ROM will not be erased when you take out the power from the MCU. Okay? So now let's go to the full, save. There we go. One of the you reset will be maintain the data. Okay, so with this tutorial, we have learned how to save our data, our any data actually, you can use a counters or any setting, for example, the speed of the motor, or we use the, some like, calibration setting of your system to store it inside the EEP room, so you just save it, instead of you just save it inside uh, variables, where these variables will be gone if you reset your system. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you have learned something from this tutorial. See you soon.